In this video, we'll talk about resource access. A resource is something that we can connect to over a network, like a file server, a database server, a web application, and so on. So, when we determine resource access, we're talking about authorization to use the resource, and authorization can only occur after successful authentication. Authentication is the proving of one's identity, whether it's a user entering a username and a password, or a specific smartphone with a trusted PKI certificate being allowed to connect to a VPN, as an example. ACLs are access control lists that determine privileges that are granted or denied. Now, you could have ACLs that apply at the network level. A network ACL is something you would see on a packet filtering firewall to control traffic into and out of a network. But then you could also see an ACL for a database that controls access to do certain things like insert or update rows in the database table, or it could be related to permissions granted to a folder on a file server and so on. So there are many different incantations then of ACLs. There are also other attributes that determine access to resources, such as time-based, rule-based, location-based, and role-based configurations. Let's take a look at each of those, starting with time-based. With time-based resource access, we need to have a reliable time source. In a network environment, that really means we're talking about using the Network Time Protocol, or NTP, to keep time in sync among multiple network devices. We might have specific days and times where access is allowed. For example, SSH traffic from a specific subnet to specific hosts might only be allowed during business hours. We might also have different types of access depending on the time of day. For example, we might ensure that nobody is connected to a server at 8 p.m. during weeknights because of backups. We might also configure this time-based resource access through policies or on a specific network device. So we might use centralized Microsoft Group Policies in Active Directory to configure this resource access, or it might be configured on a single device like a Cisco router. Now, naturally, when it comes to troubleshooting, IT technicians need to be aware if this type of time-based resource access is in use, because without knowledge of how this is configured, it could take a long time to troubleshoot why a user can't connect to a resource when, in fact, it simply might not be allowed based on this type of configuration. Then there's rule-based access control, which is also referred to as RBAC or sometimes ABAC, where the A stands for attribute-based access control. Basically what this means is we are using conditions or rules that determine resource access. An example of this is the Microsoft Windows Server 2012 R2 Dynamic Access Control or DAC. This means, for example, users might have to belong to a group such as HR, but at the same time, they have to be full-time employees, and they might then get read-write privileges. Now, full-time employees could be determined through group membership, but one of the great things with condition or rule-based access control is that we don't have to use groups. So in the case of a Windows user, an Active Directory user account, maybe there's an attribute filled in that determines whether that user is full-time or not. So Dynamic Access Control can look at Active Directory attributes instead of just the traditional group membership. Location-based access control can also be referred to as LBAC. This is where the physical location of a user, or more specifically a device that they're using, determines what access they have to resources. In the case of a mobile device, we might use GPS tracking to determine the proximity of the user to a certain location or a wireless network. Geofencing, for example, might disable mobile device cameras when the user is using that mobile device within a secured area within a facility. Role-based access control is also often referred to as RBAC. So whenever you see RBAC, be careful to look at the context in which that term is being used to ensure that you know whether it's referring to rule-based access control or, as we're discussing now, role-based access control. With role-based access control, privileges are assigned to roles. Users are then assigned to the roles and therefore, they inherit the permissions assigned to the role they're assigned to. 
Now, this will facilitate access control list management in larger companies because it's too difficult to manage on a large scale individual resource permissions granted to individual user accounts. In this video, we discussed how to determine resource access.